Good evening, church. It's wonderful to have you here with us tonight as we study God's Word. It's quite amazing to see what God is uh, teaching us every, every week, every Thursday, every Sunday, every other time we are gathered in His name. And also it's a joy to to have you with us as we, we study God's word together. We continue uh, with the study. We are in First Kings chapter four today. And basically what we're going to talk about or what we're going to see from this scripture is the prosperous governance of King Saul. We already saw last week as the Lord uh, spoke to um, Solomon, asked him a question. So he asked, what shall I give you? And he said, therefore give to your servant an understanding heart to judge your people that I may discern between good and evil. For who is able to judge this great people of yours? And this pleased the Lord that he asked for a heart that hears He asked for understanding so that he will uh, judge people justly. Let us say a word of prayer before we read this um, chapter. God, we thank you again for this day. We thank you for the privilege to be found in your presence. And we thank you for your word that is before us. I pray that, I pray that your Holy Spirit will uh, speak to our hearts, Lord. I pray that this word will be driven straight to our hearts uh, so that we'll receive the principles that you have for us that we may walk and abide by them. So be with us as we read it in Jesus' name, amen. So the King Solomon was king over all Israel, and these were his officials, Azariah, the son of Zadok, the priest, Elihoreth, and Ahijah, the sons of Shisha, scribes, Jehoshaphat, the son of Ehud, the recorder, Benaiah, the son of Jehoiada, over the army, Zadok, and Abiathar, the priest, Azariah, the son of Nathan, over the officers, Zabub, the son of Nathan, a priest and the king's friend, Ahisha, or Ahisha, over the household, and Adoniram, the son of Abda, over the labor force. We see in these few verses, uh, verses one through six, uh, technically this is Solomon's cabinet and governors that he's uh, setting over, uh, over Israel. And we saw last week just the end towards the end of uh, what we were reading about and studying, or rather chapter two, that the end of it, the Bible says, is uh, kingdom was established because he took care of those enemies who would be against the kingdom, those people who were, uh, they, they, they didn't deal well with his father David, and his father David had told him, you know, be strong, prove yourself to be a man, And as you do that, there are few people that I'm going to mention, and according to the wisdom that God will give you, 
deal with them, for you are a wise man. And after uh, Solomon dealt with those individuals, the Bible said that his uh, kingdom was established. And last week he asked for uh, wisdom, and the Lord gave it to him. And even more than that, uh, and uh, the Bible said that all Israel had the judgment which the king had rendered, and they feared the king, for they saw that the wisdom of God was with him to administer justice. And so with that, um, the, the people saw that this is not merely what um, a regular kings would do. Even the prosperous kingdoms around us, they are not able to do what Solomon just did. And with this wisdom, God also prompted him to set up a government. For if you are a good king, you are a good leader, you are not going to prosper alone. You're gonna have people who will walk alongside with you. You know, if you have wisdom and you don't have proper knowledge of setting up a governance, then things will crumble. You will have to be there for every little thing. You remember Moses, as wise and humble as he was, his father-in-law told him that he's supposed to choose elders from amongst the tribes who will judge the people for these small, small matters. Unless it's so big, then these elders would come to Moses and Moses will bring it to the Lord. So, you know, a people, you don't walk alone. And when you give people responsibility also, you don't micromanage them. You know, you, you have trusted that they're gonna discharge it well, leave it up to them. You have trusted that God has led you to uh, appoint them. And so Solomon here, uh, he was a leader of leaders. No wise leader does it all by themselves. They know how to delegate responsibility and authority to get the job done. You want things done, you have to delegate. You have to appoint people. You have to let people do what you have called them to do. And that would call for a great, a great leader. For when you empower people, they, became, they become better at what they do. But if you, know, you, you give people responsibility and you're at their back every time, you're like, so why are we even doing this? <laughs> if we're going to be micromanaged, or people will be given responsibilities and they only want to please the boss. When the boss is around, they work as you've never seen before. When the boss is out, people are just lazy around. They steal hours, they do things they ought not to do. Uh, they don't become faithful members of that company. And you know what happens? After some time, when the boss realizes that there's no much input with these people, they'll, they'll get fired and they'll get mad. They'll start accusing people, oh, so and so, because they're so close to the boss, that's why I'm fired. Now, sometimes the reason why you're fired is because you're not diligent at your work. So you gotta be diligent. And so God gave him the wisdom to set up this cabinet. And he had also the priests and the scribes and the recorders. Uh, Solomon's government was structured much like in the modern nation. You know, there are officials who serve as minister or department and secretaries over their specific areas of responsibility. If any government actually wants to su succeed, they should come and read the Bible <laughs> and see how things are set up and see how government is run peacefully. Um, Solomon's leadership was organized, very organized. He knew that God is a God of design and organization. 
and that things simply operate better and more efficiently when they are organized. There is much efficiency when things are organized. Where people are organized, where things run smoothly, you don't find a lot of trouble, you don't find a lot of chaos. Where there's a lot of chaos, you know there's a leadership problem. You just trace it from the top. And Solomon had 12 governors over Israel who provided a food for Israel, a food for the king and his household. Each one made provision for one month of the year. This is also, you know, continuing with the governance. He had 12 people who worked hard to make sure that their month there is provision of food in the king's abode. Twelve people. And this, you'd not say, well, why is this guy working out this other person? You know, the whole month is busy, busy, busy. No, they have 11 months to gather up and to set up and then one month, they provide this to the king. So you have other times to sit through, to think about what you're going to do in terms of provision. There are 12. One for January and da 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 da, da to December. Working smart. Not very hard, but working smart. And Solomon did set that in place, that one of them would provide um, for a month and then the next like that until uh, the end. These men were responsible also for taxation in their individual districts. And these were basically divided in, you know, regions and mountains and land and all that, uh, the places where the children of Israel was scattered. And the amazing thing, because of his fame in the surrounding nations, even the people who were not from Israel paid tax to Solomon. That is how he was famous, and that is how he was powerful. And they paid it without complaining. They pay tax. Uh, are you guys enjoying paying tax, right? In fact, those who have small, small businesses, have you guys read what is going to happen on the 25th, the gift for Christmas? All the pay bills and tills and all that stuff, they're going to be turned into the online whatever ETR and you're going to be taxed. <laughs> so you cannot run away. If you start doing you know, business and people are just paying you straight through your mobile phone, they'll find you and tax you. So you cannot, unless you receive cash, <laughs> and even if you receive cash, you will not just run away, I tell you. Mukorne ya serikali ni kama inakuwa mrefu. You shall not run away. You know, there are people who genuinely want to pay tax because they're doing business. There are a lot of people who don't want to pay tax and they want to enjoy the goodies of the country. Whatever will happen with that, we don't know. All I know is they said that will be the Christmas gift <laughs> for, for 2024. And these are the names. Ben-Har in the mountains of Ephraim. Ben-Dika in Makaz. Shalabim. Beth Shemesh and Elon Beth Haman, Ben Heath in Aruboth, to him uh, belonged Soko and all the land of Hepha, Ben Abinadab in all the regions of Dor. He had, these names are going to cause me a lot of trouble. So you, I'm just going to let you read them and we're going to just keep them for a minute. My, my tongue is very heavy. 
I just realized. <laughs> uh, this, so this is technically those people who have been given, the 12 people who have been given uh, the regions to, uh, to, to govern. That is, uh, is going to verses 19 also. Verses 20, Judah and Israel were as numerous as the sun by the sea in the multitude, eating and drinking and rejoicing. Now, this is very unusual as compared to what was happening, you know, when Saul was king and even partly when uh, David was king, that this was not experienced, that these people, they sat, they ate, and they rejoiced. There was a lot of peace in the land. And we're going to see the reason why that happened, this prosperity of Solomon and Israel. We would call it, you know, there's a lot of prosperity and there's a lot of peace. And that would be, you know, um, the, the, the earthly um, typology of what we would experience spiritually with Christ. In Christ there is peace and there is prosperity. Though this one was not permanent, it was just for that season when um, Solomon was alive. But we know when we receive God's peace, uh, it is forever. It is within this life and even the life to come that will have an everlasting peace. So Solomon reigned over all the kingdom from the river to the land of the Philistine. As far as the border of Egypt, they brought tribute and served Solomon all the days of his life. Numerous, I say these people, numerous as the sun by the sea, eating and drinking and rejoicing. You know, the reign of Solomon was the golden age of Israel as a kingdom. The population grew robustly, and it was a season of great prosperity, allowing plenty of leisure time and pursuit of good pleasures. But you see, when we are full and we have a lot of things with us, Slowly, slowly, we drift and we don't think about who gave us prosperity. And you know, God, time after time, he's warned us. He says, when you are full, you have eaten the goodies of the land. Do not beat up your chest and say, we did it. I did it with my own strength. For when that thought comes on you, know that your fall is just at the door. When the Lord blesses you, whether you are in good or bad times, remember that it's the Lord who has provided that for you to enjoy, for you to rejoice on what he's given you. Do not take it too far and start to, you know, brag about it because some other people don't have what you have. You know, sometimes people think because they eat from January to, to December that those who miss food, they're just lazy. Ain't we? You see people walking down the road going to town, you think, ah, these people are lazy. They, 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 don't, they don't work. That's why they don't have money to, to buy a matatu or a wasili or to buy their own vehicle. Sometimes we just think people are lazy. We don't know their story. We don't know what they're going through. You just don't know people. You don't, you don't make blanket assumptions over people's lives. Maybe they just chosen to walk. <laughs> they want to get fit. Or the doctor told them, it is good for your heart to walk, so just walk. And they just walk into town. They have money in the bank account. Some people have zero money in their account and they're with Mantatu every time, with taxis every time. When you're full, remember the Lord. It is the Lord who has blessed you. 
So they enjoyed, and Solomon, the Bible says, reigned over the kingdom from the river to the land of the Philistines, as far as the border of Egypt. Solomon was not a warrior or a general. This peace was achieved by King David and was enjoyed by King Solomon. It was also assisted under God's providence by a season of decline and weakness amongst Israel's neighbors. They were unstable, not stable at all. And you know the other reason why Solomon gained a lot of prosperity and peace is because he went and took important goodies from the kingdoms around him. You think about, you know, you're a king and this king from Israel who is very wise has come and married your daughter. Are you going to wage war against him, your son-in-law, really? You ain't going to do that. And you can be sure as much as Solomon did all these things, he also mixed worldly wisdom apart from just the wisdom that God gave him. And this one took him down the road. We're going to see that uh, when we get to chapter 11. It is not just prosperity because, or, or prosperity and peace because it was God's will. Some things he did that were against the will of God, but God just permitted these things to happen. For this season, he did not abide. We are going to see a few scriptures here, uh, especially in Deuteronomy, where they were warned not to marry uh, from foreign nations, not to uh, increase uh, the, the, the chariots and horsemen and all that stuff. Now Solomon's provision for one day was 30 cores of fine flour, 60 cores of meal, 10 fatted oxen, 20 oxen from the pastures, and 100 sheep besides the deer, gazelle, and roebucks, and fatted foals. So when they, they, they talk of, you know, fatted foals or fatted oxen, these were the ones that were, what would be call, you know, they were zero grazed. They were fed at a particular place and friends this was a lot of meat <laughs> this was a lot of food um, you know the mathematician say that the estimate of this food would feed right about 15,000 to 36,000 people in a day that is how much food was provided in a day. <laughs> that is apart from what people are enjoying outside there who are not working in the palace. Think about that. It was just people eating and rejoicing. It was about food and food and party after party after party after party. A lot of food. Fatted oxen, you know. 30 cores of flour. Cores is um, basically equivalent of 220 liters or about 55 gallons. That was food for one day. For he had dominion over all the region on this side of the river, from uh, Chisa even to Gaza, namely over all the kings on this side of the river. And he had peace on every side all around him. Wow. He had peace all around him. I mean... If we, we are all striving for peace, you have only one neighbor who is causing you sleepless night all year long. <laughs> this, this guy enjoyed peace from all the kingdoms, all the neighbors, and they paid 
tribute to him. This was amazing, to have peace all around you. You know, it is written here, let me read us this psalm. Psalm 72. This is actually a psalm of Solomon, if you did know. Psalm 72 is a psalm of Solomon. If you read the, the, the whole of it, it will give you the idea of uh, what Paul, uh, Solomon was talking about. Let me pick a few verses. Verses 4 says, And he will bring justice to the poor of the people. He will save the children of the needy, and he will break in pieces the oppressor. They shall fear you as long as the sun and the moon endure throughout all generation. He shall come down like rain upon the grass before the mowing, like showers that waters the earth. In his days, the righteous shall flourish in abundance of peace until the moon is no more. He shall have dominion also from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. And those who dwell in the wilderness will bow before him. And his enemy will lick the dust. And the king of um, Tashish and the isles will bring presents. The king of Sheba and Seba will offer gifts. Yes, all kings shall fall down before him and all nations shall serve him. This he wrote as a prophecy of the one true king who would come and who would rule in an everlasting peace that the kings from the ends of the earth, all the people of the earth will bow before him and worship him. This, the, the peace that was enjoyed in this kingdom, in these only 11 chapters that we are going to see, or 12, they just short-lived. But the one who comes after him is greater, that the, the peace you receive from him is unending. And he said that, um, yes, all kings shall fall down before him, and all the nations shall serve him. At this particular time, all the kings that surrounded um, Israel, they all came and honored the King Solomon. And you know, God told him that. If you will hear from me, if you will pay attention, I will give you honor. I will give you wealth. I will give you a lot of things. All these blessings will come upon you and they will overtake you if you will keep my status. And Judah and Israel dwell safely, each man under his vine and his fig tree. And from Dan as far as Bathsheba, all the days of Solomon. Basically when he says, you know, they, they dwell safely, each man under his vine and fig tree. This is a sign of prosperity that every man, not just the king prospering in the kingdom, but every man prospered in their homes. This was great prosperity. And Solomon had 40,000 stalls of horses for his chariots and 12,000 horsemen. You guys remember in Deuteronomy chapter 17, verses 16, this is what the Bible say. And this was the admonition when they will have kings. It says, but he shall not multiply horses for himself, nor cause the people to return to Egypt to multiply horses for the Lord has said to you, you shall not return that way again. Don't go that route. Don't go that direction. The Lord warned them. 
we, we don't do a good job listening to the Lord, ain't we? <laughs> he blesses us and the next minute we, you know, we, we try to, to merge. You know, God has spoken to us and this is a great thing. This is a, the, 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 the great move of God. And with that, we begin to have our own ideas that we didn't ask of the Lord. And you remember David instructed him to always keep or read the book of the law that was written. It is in, besides the throne, there's a book of the law. Revise it, read it every time. Because all these things were written in there. And one of the things that was uh, pretty clear was this verse. You shall not multiply the horses. And what do we see here in verses 26? And Solomon had 40,000 stalls of horses for his chariot and 12,000 horsemen. So is this wisdom or beginning to decline? <laughs> Having no wisdom anymore? Or ignoring the word of God? Do you know the danger that we find ourselves in as a people of God? is to know what he said and we ignore it totally and we don't do it. That is the fear for many people that you know a lot of scripture but you don't know what to do with them or you ignore. You don't want to do what it says because most of the time it violates what your carnal man wants. That war, as Paul tells us, it is constantly there. The spirit is waging war against the flesh and vice versa, the flesh against the spirit. So that the things you want to do, you find yourself not doing. The things you hate doing, you find yourself doing them every time. And the more you do them, you perfect them. And um, Paul writes to the Galatians and says, hey, you foolish Galatians. Who bewitched you? Nani ali waroga? Mujirogoe. Nani ali waroga? You began in the spirit and you're making things perfect in the flesh. He was not just writing to the Galatians. He's writing to us. To consider his word. And this Governors, each man in his month provided food for King Solomon and for all who came to King Solomon's table. There was no lack in their supply. They also brought barley and straw to the proper place for the, for the horses and steeds each man according to his charge. Friends, also we see as these men who are faithfully serving in the, the, in the king's government, everyone discharged their duty without compromise. You know, sometimes as Christians and people who are named by God's name, we, we don't do things so well. Actually, this isn't a Christo. Watch it. Watch it. Ro atatuongoza. No, no, no. Ro anatuongoza kufanya vitu well. Do things well. Don't just do things for the sake of doing. Do things well. Do things with excellence. Excellency should be part of your work. Whether your, whether your job is writing, write well. Whether your job is speaking, speak well. You're, you're, you're a shamba worker, work well. You're, whatever things you do in life, do them well. Discharge them well. These people, they discharge their duties well according to what they were commanded to do. So don't just do things without considering. You know, I, I read something from uh, Spurgeon. 
he say that in Solomon's courts, all his officers had a service to carry out. Every man according to his church. It is exactly so in the kingdom of our Lord Jesus Christ. If we are truly his, he has called us to some work in the office. And he wills us to discharge that office diligently. We are not to be gentlemen at ease, but men at arms. Not gentlemen at ease, but men at arms. Not loiterers, but laborers. Not glittering spangles, but burning and shining light for the king. You don't just look good over there. You walk. You do things that pertains to what you are given without complaining or murmuring. That is what happens. So whatever you do, do it for the Lord. Your brain and tongue, give it to the Lord. Your hands and feet, give it to the Lord. Everything that pertains to you, give it to the Lord. Every man according to his charge. And our work is gonna be beautiful. And God gave Solomon wisdom and exceedingly great understanding and largeness of heart like the sand of the seashore. Thus Solomon's wisdom excelled the wisdom of all the men of the east and all the wisdom of Egypt. For he was wiser than all men, than Ethan the Israel height, and Heman uh, Chakol and Dara, the sons of Mahol, and his fame was all was in all the surrounding of the nation. His fame was beyond what people would, you know, have comprehended. God gave Solomon wisdom exceedingly. And you know, God, God is not giving him because he is a perfect man. God gave him wisdom because he asked for what is right. You know, James the, apostle, the, the, the bishop of the church of Jerusalem said, uh, we do not have because we haven't asked. But if we ask also, we ask amiss. We ask only to fulfill the, the pleasures or the things that we want for ourselves. We say a double-minded person cannot receive anything of the Lord. If you are single-minded, the Lord would use you greatly, friends. So our advice for you tonight, be single-minded towards the Lord, discharging this thing that he's given you wholeheartedly, without you know, going and uh, worshiping other gods and doing things that would cause the Lord to um, not bless you in this manner. He became so prominent and famous, even amongst kings. In a strong sense, this is a fulfillment of the great promise to an obedient Israel. So this is what um, the Bible says in Deuteronomy. Uh, chapter 28, verses 1. Now it shall come to pass, if you diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God to observe carefully all his commandments, which I command you today, that the Lord your God will set you high above all the nations of the earth. Who wrote those words? God saved them. And in verses 10 of the same, 
He said, then all the people of the earth shall see that you are called by the name of the Lord and they shall be afraid of you. <laughs> I mean, you look uh, upon this and all these kings and the people around, they were somewhat afraid of this king. In a sense, these blessings came upon Solomon traced from how David was obedient to God. Many, many, many times. The reason why, you know, David's obedience, uh, actually, you read a lot of scriptures, it goes beyond Solomon, is because it was a man who, if he knows for sure, that he is going against the will of God. He will repent honestly. You know, there are people who, you know, you, you have sinned against God and all you say is, God, if there is anything, <laughs> no, you know you have sinned against God. You know there are things you have done that are not right. Uh, the people have spoken to you Maybe it's your pastor, maybe it's your neighbor, maybe it's whoever it is, and they have spoken God's word to you and you have ignored. David would, uh, you know, pass a judgment and say, whoever did this, they deserve this. And, you know, the prophet Nathan would say, well, that's you. What you gonna do about it? Say, or I am done. And the Lord will say, well, you're not gonna die but this sword will not escape your door. It will always be there, but your life will be spared. Be sure to obey the Lord. And these blessings, they, they are also coming to Solomon because also of David's obedience to God. Even in the last, last days of King David, he would be sober enough to tell his son to keep the Lord's commandment, for that is what would sustain him. But vice versa, you, you, you think about the life of Solomon, we'll see it at the end, that all these women that he brought upon himself turned his heart towards the allegiance of God and he worshipped other gods. The Lord warned him. He did not... Uh, listen, the Bible mentioned here that he was wiser than all men, than Ethan, uh, the Israelite, and Heman. These two people mentioned here, they also wrote Psalms. Psalm uh, 89 was written by Ethan, and Psalm 88 was written by Heman. And then lastly, uh, we see here that Solomon's broad knowledge uh, of science and nature is, is, is talked about here. Uh, it says in verses 32, he spoke 3,000 proverbs and his songs were 105. Also, he spoke of trees from the cedar tree of Lebanon even to the high soap that springs out of the wall. He spoke also of animals, of birds, of creeping things, and of fish. And men of all nations from all the kings of the earth who had heard of his wisdom came to hear the wisdom of Solomon. I mean, people would just gather to come. That means Solomon was a busy guy. Talking was the order of the day. <laughs> talking and talking and giving counsel and all that stuff. It's like there was a great assembly every day for Solomon to just come. People would travel days and weeks to come and hear the wisdom of Solomon. 
Solomon's great wisdom, divinely inspired wisdom. In fact, it makes up a considerate portion of the Bible, especially the, the, the Proverbs. Uh, we're going to come back to Proverbs when Josh comes back. Very wonderful insight that he gives to us. He cautions us every day. His songs also, uh, he wrote a lot of songs. We, uh, songs of Solomon and Ecclesiastes, you'll find a lot of those and a few of them in the Psalms. And also, his wisdom was not also only to counsel human beings, but also the insight to know about trees and animals and fish and all these things. He never went to a proper or a formal school to go and study about many of these things. It was the insight, the wisdom that was given to him by God. He had a divinely gifted intellect and the ability to understand things beyond other humans. And this was great. Even, you know, if he mentions that his wisdom surpassed the wisdom of the Egyptians. The Egyptians were known for, you know, having a lot of wisdom and many things. They were learned fellows. But friends... You know, this might seem to be, you know, well, what are we drawing from this? The names of the governors and all that, uh, the, the food that they ate, uh, is this relevant to us and all this wisdom? You know, if you'd be keen enough to see the scripture, you'd always see that the scripture always, from Genesis to Revelation, always points us to Christ, who is the Prince of Peace who will give us a peace that is not just short-lived. Uh, this people of Israel, the Bible says, they enjoyed uh, peace and prosperity. But we are going to see it uh, at the end of chapter 12 or when we begin somewhere on there. You know, there will be a lot of wrangles and the kingdom will begin to split. These people going their way, Judah going their separate way, the rest of the tribes ganging and going their separate ways, and a lot of other kings coming in. It is only in Jesus Christ that we'll find a straight kingdom that is never ending. That when he gives you peace, you know that it is not short-lived. When he gives you prosperity, you know that it is not shortly lived. When he blesses your life, I mean, he encourages us to pursue the kingdom of God first, and all these things will be added. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. How he's going to add them to us we don't know. All I know is that he says he will bless also the work of our hands. We need to work. We need to do things. We need to plan ourselves. As we also see here, uh, Solomon uh, neatly arranging this kingdom and the governors and all these people. If all the governors that we have in this country, you know, how many? 49 of them? Oh, whatever number, 47. If they would work diligently, there would be great prosperity in this land. Why? Because we have resources. But normally they just come and they go into our pockets. Our pockets, we just gather them in. They come because we don't know if next time we are going back. So all we do, as much as they can, beba na gunia enda nyumbani. And that is what we do. It is only God's uh, kingdom, the kingdom of our Lord Jesus Christ, that gives peace that is unending. Peace that surpasses human understanding. And the God of peace, the God of mercy, the God of love, he alone 
if you allow him to reign in your heart, he'll give you what human beings cannot give you. We are so limited. You, you know, you, you can find, you know, little happiness from having friends here and there. But at the end of the day, we get frustrated with people. Our friendships, they end sometimes. But the peace that we receive from our Lord Jesus Christ, it is never ending. Therefore, he says, be anxious about nothing, but in prayer, with prayer and thanksgiving in your heart. With prayer and thanksgiving in your heart. Be a people who will always find reasons to thank God for. What did he do to you today? Woke you up, you're alive, you have a lot of things with you. Thank God for that. Thank God for many things. Don't just join the bandwagon of people getting frustrated with every little thing that comes. We can talk about things, but don't just get frustrated about everything. You know. Hope to see you Sunday, though. Because <laughs> many people say, ah, the streets were blocked. Some of us are walking. <laughs> They're blocked. We're just going to walk straight the streets and go to church. Many people will not go to church. and say, well, we couldn't figure out how to go to church. But I know you guys will be here on Sunday. Actually, Sunday, we'll have a guest speaker. A friend of ours uh, was going to come and speak. And we pray that the Lord would... Uh, uh, awaken our spirit as we receive his word every week and even today. Let us pray together. God, we thank you for your word. We thank you for what you're teaching us through this history that we learn from men of old, even from a man who has talked about many things and he says vanity upon vanity. Um, and his reminded us that the chief reason and the purpose why we live is to worship God and to honor our Lord as long as we have his breath in our lungs. And so, Lord, we pray that you would um, grant us wisdom to know how to apply your word in our daily lives, Lord. We encounter a lot of challenges, a lot of things come our way. And even when prosperity comes our way, I pray that we'll remember that it is you who has provided for us. And so we ought not to um, be wise in our own, just having intelligence in our own way. But I pray that our wisdom will proceed from you. Uh, give us day-to-day wisdom to know how we ought to conduct ourselves. As David also prayed and says, that help us to number our days so that we'll be wise in them. This is our prayer tonight, that you would help our hearts to grasp that truth, Lord. As we disperse, I pray for your blessing upon us. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, church, for coming, and the Lord bless you.